Welcome back everybody to another narrated tour of a place in Scotland. Um, this time we're at a place called Toryburn, which is just along the Fife coast, about east of a place called Kourous. Lovely, beautiful little place, part of the co Fife coastal path. So, why am I here? I hear you all cry. Um, I was on a witch hunt, would you believe? I was actually on a witch hunt. So what I wanted to find out, and I heard about, was one of the last, or maybe only, graves of a Scottish witch. So I headed out to Toryburn and find out more information about the individual. Now, who am I looking at here? Uh, a lady called Lilius Aidy, it was her name. Uh, she was born around the 1640, 1641 time, and she lived in Toryburn Fife. And she died in 1704. Now, not much is known about her life outside of the specific ordeal I'm about to tell you. In the 1700s, uh, witch hysteria was massive. It was rampant all over Fife and Scotland. One woman who was drinking with uh, Lily Sadie, Jean Bizet, actually accused Adie herself of being a witch, um, allegedly saying the words, Beware lest Lily Sadie come upon you and your child. Uh, Jean felt very poorly and accused Lilith of being a witch due to her feeling ill or feeling bad. The cries that Jean put out, the the screams, the the, the temper that uh, Jean had with regards to Lilith was enough to warrant the arrest of Lilith Eady in the, the 18th century. The false accusation was a kind of common trend in witch hunting if you will from the period of, of the, 18, the 18th century or so and beyond um, furthermore I would say that the ED seems to have been at risk of any accusation uh, women were generally accused of witchcraft um, and they were typically, if they were typically different now what do you mean by different? maybe she then witches were seen as if they were older, over 60 even if they didn't fit into social convention or social norms if they were maybe had learning difficulties, but they were they were super intelligent individuals. They all came under that banner of you're a witch. So what actually happened? though, she was arrested and she was put in jail. She was tortured for about a month and then she died. She wasn't actually given a trial. She wasn't given her defence. Now this had never happened before, and the authorities didn't actually know what to do with her. So there was questioning by the Reverend Alan Logan looking across the the beach. I will be honest with you, I couldn't find the grave, but I will put some pictures up during this video of what I'm looking for in the grave of what I'm looking for. It was actually the opposite end. So I went for a walk along heading towards the north coast of Fife, but actually I should have been going sort of back the way at the Toryburn car park and it's right there beside two big boulders. Um I will go back and if I do catch it again I'll certainly put a, a quick video up or a short or some photographs on, on my Facebook pages or Instagram or sort of anything like that. Um, but sort of going back to the story of of Elias, um, the she was she wasn't even tried. She was uh, arrested, and she died within a month. And the people who were trying her couldn't understand what to do with her because she hadn't gone on trial. Because witches were normally burned at the stake; they were normally given a horrendous, horrific um, death. She died. Now, before Lilius was actually accused, when she was in prison, she actually confessed to um, connecting with the devil. Now, this would have been seen as she was under torture techniques, or she'd been tortured in prison, and she just couldn't handle it. She just couldn't deal with it. Um, she said that she was in a cornfield at one point um, than with the devil at sunset. Um, during further questioning, by the Reverend, she also stated that there was more witches involved. Uh, her and the witches would meet the devil in groups. The assumption was that an accused witch could be able to identify others. So, Adie claimed that she could not identify others as all wore masks at the meetings. Although she could have named other alleged witches and potentially made her situation a lot easier, the simple lie saved the lives of others in the community. Others that would have been accused of the over 60s, the more, slightly more intelligent people who dabbled in white witchcraft with herbs and spices and whatever it may be, they would be accused of as being a witch. So, because they couldn't burn her at the stake, the preferred method of killing a witch um, was, or laying a witch to rest 
um, was actually through water. Uh, it was seen as witches couldn't swim, they were scared of water. So they basically dug, put in a coffin and dug a grave out at the beach in Toryburn. Um, not only did they bury her on the beach, they put a ton weight slab on top of her to make sure that she wouldn't get out. The, the whole point was that not only if she wouldn't get out, there would be no, in a word, reanimation of her. People didn't want her to come back and to put a curse on the the area, um, individuals, whatever it may be. So they made sure that she would never come back. Um, it, it, it's a bit of a horrendous story, if I'm honest, but I think it's it's worth telling. It's part of Scottish Scottish history and it's worth telling stories that never really get told around the world or in, in Scotland at least. In 1852, antiquarian Joseph Neil Payton ordered Eddie's exhumation. Um, her coffin supposedly was turned into souvenirs such as walking sticks. Um, her... Uh, her, the handles were, were turned into the, the caps for, for these walking sticks for gentry. Peyton was practitioner of phrenology and took his time examining Eddie's skull. It was then passed to Fife Medical Association and then on to St Andrews University. The skull was last traced to an exhibit in Glasgow's Bella Houston Park before completely disappearing entirely. Now, the whereabouts of the rest of her body is also slightly unknown, although it was reported in 2019 that they were likely sold by Peyton to other antique collectors. In 2019, Fife Council launched a campaign to try and locate Edie's remains. Nothing has been found to this date so far. In 2017, the Centre for Autonomy and Human Identification at Dundee University managed to create the face of Elaine, using pictures taken of her skull before its disappearance. Now, here's an image of the reconstruction of her face. Um, Not the green face, warted nose, pointy hat, broomstick. She was a normal... Some may say that she was an intelligent individual. Some may say that there was learning learning difficulties in her as well. There's conflicting reports that I appear to have picked up and read. Um, In whatever case, she... She was falsely accused. Um, there's various famous witches, the the Salem witches. Um, even in Scotland, you've got the Paisley witch trials, which I I'm actually interested in doing a a, a video on, or I'll maybe do a sort of podcasty type thing with images. This really intrigued me about the the story of uh, Lilius Eady, um and the the witches of of Scotland. But Lilius Eady was a victim of superstition and and fear in Scotland gone absolutely wild and gone rampant um, I would say she's remembered for her ordeal certainly um, if you're into those things and you know the stories then you'll, you'll, you'll have heard of this this individual, this, this lady um, but also she, she could be remembered for her bravery in refusing to accuse innocent ladies, innocent women of, of being a witch or, or dabbling in the crafts, the dark crafts she saved them certainly from a familiar fate um, in which she could have been complicit her intertidal grave is the only known one in Scotland of an accused witch. Most were burned. The Fife area is littered with wonderful, wonderful history. And as some of you may or may not know, I'm a huge fan of the Fife area. And to sum up, sometimes the most important places in Scotland, or Scottish history, aren't signposted. They're not even in any guidebook. You could miss them if you're walking through a place or driving past a place. But these places all hold history, they all hold life and they all hold stories. So I happened to just come upon this in the off chance. I was interested actually in the Paisley Witches and I started to do a bit of digging and found out this is where I wanted to go. This was where I wanted to see. Now as I say, I never managed to catch the grave. It is on the right hand side of the walk. I went left. (laughs) But it's there. Now what I would suggest if you do go and see it, stand back. You can pay your respects. But sometimes these beaches hold sinking sands and the grounds are not great on them. So just be very, very careful. But as you can see, the area is beautiful. It's stunning. Um, Five Coast holds so much beauty. I want to thank you all for listening to this and watching this video at the same time. Uh, I was fascinated by it. So I hope you've learned a wee bit from it. If you happen to know about cool things in your area please let me know in the comment section below i'd love to know 
if you know about Scottish certain parts of Scottish history that nobody you think nobody really knows about, again, stick it in the comments section below. It'd be great to have a, a community element of telling stories about your area. It'd be fantastic. So until next time guys, make sure you like, share and subscribe. Look after yourselves, take care of each other. Until next time, cheerio, bye bye.